in this lesson, we're going to look at how do you evaluate a data set to decide if the normal model is a good fit for it. So in list one, make sure you have the presidential data in list one. We stored it as the list PREZ. My guess is that you still have it there. I want you to make a histogram of this data set. This is the window to use. So this is the X minimum of 40, the maximum of 74 for X, the scale of two, the Y minimum of negative three, the maximum of 15, the scale of one. So remember to get the histogram turned on, you have to go to the second y equals in order to get to the stat plots you want your first plot turned on make sure you've selected the histogram option and list one then you hit the graph button and we'll be able to continue so if you're not done with that pause the video finish steps one and two and then we'll proceed so when trying to decide if the standard normal distribution is a good fit the first thing that you should do is check to see if your data are even symmetric or mound shaped. So you should be able to see that in the graph. So this is a symmetric data set, but more importantly, it's also a mound shaped data set. So it should be symmetric. But you can have symmetric data sets that aren't single mounds. So it should be one mound, mound shaped tallest in the middle. So another way to decide if it's symmetric is to see if the mean and the median are close. So in fact, these are very, very close. We can run the one variable stats command on list one. Stat, calculate the one variable stats command. So with the data, the presidential data in list one. So notice the median, if you scroll down, you can see the five number summary. The median is 55, but look at the mean. The mean is 54.97 repeating. So, I mean, that rounds to 55 also. So, again, this is a suggestion that it's certainly a symmetric data set because the median is 55 years, and this is also the value to which the mean rounds. They're really, really close. So, those are ideas. A symmetric mound-shaped distribution with a mean and a median that are close, those are ideas that we've looked at before. Third, I want to show you a new type of plot. This type of plot is called a normal probability plot, and it's created automatically by the calculator. And I want you to understand what it's doing and then what you're looking for in this graph to decide if a normal distribution is a good plan for the data set. So what this plot does, it assumes that the data are from a normal distribution and it estimates Z scores for the observation, but it estimates Z scores for each observation, assuming that we're using a normal distribution. So in order to graph this plot, because we're using the actual X values to plot your window, you can use the same 40 for a minimum, 74 for a maximum, and a scale of two. Those are fine, but the Y values, the outputs in a normal probability plot, those values are estimates of z-scores. So most of the time we have z-scores between negative three and positive three. So that's the best y minimum and y maximum to use. And then we'll just use a scale of one. So those are the criterion for the window here. So for the window, we can keep the same x values, but for the y minimum, keep it negative three, make the y maximum three, a y scale of one is perfectly fine. But to get the normal probability plot graphed, the next thing you need to do is press the second button and the y equals button. We're going to go into plot number one, which you should already have turned on. Press the down arrow, and we're going to scroll through by pressing the right and left arrows. You can scroll through the different types of plots. It is the very last plot that you want to choose. So. Um, it's a, it looks like a little line. It's after the, after the two box and whisker plots. So that's the normal probability plot. So press enter to select that. And then below it, you'll see two options appear. One says data list. Our data are already in list one. So the data axis, leave it as the X axis. So we're graphing our data values as our X values. That's the way we set our window. So the mark, all that does is indicate the kind of mark that we're going to see on the screen as the X values are plotted against their predicted Y values. So the plot is turned on, the window is set. 
to graph the normal probability plot, just hit the graph button. You'll no longer see a histogram, you're going to see a scatter plot on your screen. So understand if you press the trace, if you press the trace button, which is right next to the graph button, um, if you press that trace button, the depending on the order in which you have the data points in list one, mine are still in order. I had sorted them. They're still in order from smallest to largest age. So 42 Teddy Roosevelt, that's the first X value that's being traced on my plot. This is not the actual Z-score for Teddy Roosevelt. That is the Z-score predicted. Assuming that the data come from a normal distribution, we would predict a Z-score of about negative 2.29 for this X value of 42. That's not the actual Z-score. That's the predicted Z-score of the normal probability plot. If you press the, the right and left arrows, then you can trace through the other points. You can see at the bottom of the screen the X values and the Y values of the predicted Z-scores. Now, here's what we're looking for. We are looking in this graph for a linear trend. If you see a linear trend in the normal probability plot, that is evidence that the normal distribution is a good fit for this data set. Here's why. So, first of all, a normal probability plot with a linear trend suggests evidence that the original data really can be modeled with a normal distribution, and that's because Z scores are a linear transformation of the data set. Look at the z-score formula. The z-score formula says take your observation, x, subtract the mean, which in this case is 55 years, divide by the standard deviation of 6.6. .6. Well, dividing by 6.6 .6 is the same thing as multiplying the quantity x minus 55 by 1 over 6.6. .6. So now you can take that quantity 1 over 6.6, .6, you can distribute it then to the x and to the 55, and so you can rewrite this as 1 over 6.6, .6, that is multiplied to x minus the 55 divided by 6.6. .6. So, but subtracting the 55 over 6.6 .6 is the same as adding the opposite. And what I want you to see here now is we have a linear form. So the z scores are the outputs. The inputs are the X values, those would be the presidential ages, though that's our data. But look, we're taking the X value and we're multiplying by 1 over 6.6. .6. That's the slope. So understand we have outputs that are equal to our X values times a slope plus an intercept. The intercept is the negative 55 over 6.6. .6. This is the intercept. So we can rearrange Z scores to look like Y equals MX plus B. The Y values are the outputs, the, the Z scores. The slope is 1 over 6.6. .6. X is the data set. Plus, here's B, here's the Y intercept. So literally, if we take this expression and put it into the Y equals menu, when I say that, I mean this expression right here. If we take this expression and put it into the y equals menu, we can actually plot this on top of the normal probability plot. And we can see how well does this linear model that I turned the z-score formula into, how well does it fit what we see, the predicted z-scores in the normal probability plot. So on your calculator, press the y equals button. This is the y equals menu. And the first thing I'm going to do is use parentheses and put in my slope. So I'm going to put in open parentheses, 1 divided by the 6.6. .6. I'm going to close the parentheses, and then I need to put my x next to it, the input. So that is the button right to the left of the stat button. That button says x, t, theta, and n on it. So again, right next to the second, to the stat button, rather, is the x button. Press that. Then, um, I'll use a plus sign, plus I'm going to use parentheses again, and my intercept is the opposite of 55 divided by 6.6. .6. Then I'll close the parentheses on my intercept there. So literally what we're about to do, if you press the graph button, you'll see the normal probability plot, but then at the same time, you will see the line. 
we turned the z-score formula into a straight line. And if you notice on this graph, the straight line, the z-score formula, the straight line that we just plotted follows the linear trend very closely in this normal probability plot. So a linear trend in the normal probability plot suggests that the normal model really is a good fit for, these, for, this, for this data set. So in the next video, we're going to do the fourth and final piece of what you can do in order to evaluate whether the normal model is a good fit for the data set, and that's checking the empirical rule, literally checking to see if you get about 68% of the data within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% within two standard deviations, and then about 99.7% within three standard deviations of the mean.